down Shazam and his family. Reasons to see this one here? Reasons to? Reasons not to? <laughs> What's next? Episode 6. Here's your host, Pete Mitchell. Welcome to Pete and Hannah's review show, What's Next? The show where we help you figure out what to watch next. We're episode six. I'm here with my great co-host, Hannah. How has your week been? Pretty good. We have a great show today, Hen. We're going to yeah. look at the sequel to the surprise DC hit, Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Then we're going to look at Till, which is a civil rights uh, drama piece. Mm. Then we're going to look at Living with the great Bill Nye, yeah. who got nominated for his performance in this movie. And then we're going to finish with the prequel to X. We saw that movie last year, and that is called Pearl. Yeah. To the show, we current 2023 championship movie of the year. For Hannah, it is... Creed 3. And for myself, it is Scream 6. So to the reviews, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Re-rated that movie a banger. The elevator pitch. So, number two picks up after number one where teenagers, kids, have special powers. And the family has all got powers now along with the main character, Shazam, Billy Batson. And they are working out how to use these great powers. They can fly, they can run fast, they can use sparkling things out of their hands. And they're going to face the Atlas sisters who were banished to a realm by a wizard. And they're trying to get their powers back and their their world back as well. Reasons not to see this one, Hen? It is a very ridiculous, stupid plot. It is a superhero movie and we have kind of just been getting those constantly. But I feel this one might hit the reset button for some of you. I find that the last couple have been way too serious. And this one kind of reminds me of like the classic kind of cheesy superhero movies that we've been missing. Yeah, I, I like this movie. Um, it was funny. And yeah, it's like it's a kid's type uh, of a film. Fun for the family. But it is fun for the family. And it's got a lot of heart to it. Um, Helen Mirren, for a 77-year-old, she's having a lot of fun in her life. And uh, she, she's really good in this movie. Uh, some great performances. Rachel Zegler, um, we saw her in West Side Story. She, she's good. And like all the characters from the original, they, they've got a lot of characters to give time to here, but they do a really great job in you know giving everyone just enough time to shine. Um, Lucy Lou, she's a lot of gunk that's been thrown at her for her performance, but she's just having fun. Chilling you know? the scenery, which yeah. is what you do in a superhero movie. Yeah, she's, she's playing with dragons. Come on, come on, guys. Uh, Dimon Honsu, he's been uh, in the news for some controversial um, uh, comments, but he... He's funny in this movie. He is great. I'd love a little TV show with, the, you know, following the wizard around. That, that sounds cool to me. You know, don't take it to yourself so seriously. This movie is well worth it, giving it a go and go see it at the movies. And Shazam! Fury of the Gods is a definite recommend. Mm. The next movie we're going to look at is Till. Mm. We rated that movie a golf clap, mm. which is three stars. The elevator pitch. A mother has to overcome the terrible loss of her son due to a lynching. Uh, reason not to see this movie, Hen? It's very harrowing. It's very upsetting subject matter. The fact that it's true, the fact that it's something that happened for such a long time too. Yeah, it's very hard to watch for anyone who, yeah. Knowing this story and you, you go into the movie, um, they portray it really well. Um, the performances are fantastic. I'm really surprised this movie wasn't nominated for Best Picture. Um, yeah, it's. I, I think it's a really good movie, and it's well, well worth um, people uh, giving it a look. You know, it's probably not a movie movie, but it's you know when it comes on a, a streaming service, give it a watch. Um, it's amazing how like the mother has overcome a terrible loss of her son, and she thought about how she could improve the lives of other people and she became a great civil rights activist, um, a great educator as well um, for the rest of her life until she died in 2003. Um, Till, um, outstanding movie, um, definitely a golf clap and 
definitely one to watch when you see it on your streaming platforms. The next movie we're going to talk about is Living. Living, we rated that movie a golf clap. Again, that's three stars. The elevator pitch, it's really simple. A man finds out that he's dying and how he's dealing with that. Reasons not to see this one. I think it is long. It is an English period piece. Um, you know, it takes a while to get the story. There's like a, a some terrible cuts in this one. Um, but reads us two to this movie here. Uh, Bill Nye, who was nominated, he is just wonderful. He has an amazing performance. And the story is it's just like the classic, you know, you have a little amount of time left and you want to do something about it. It's very touching, very warming. Bill Nye, great career, love actually. He was in that um, romantic film uh, with... Um, Rachel McAdams, uh, About Time, but Time Travel. <laughs> that movie is uh, fantastic as well. Uh, great career, Bill Nye, and you deserve that o Oscar nomination. And uh, great to see in this movie. We recommend this movie, but definitely it's, it's, a, it's a streaming type of movie. But living, um, definitely worth the three stars. The final movie that we're going to review today is Pearl. Pearl is a prequel to, um, it was a su surprise little horror hit, um, X. Um, we had we had a funny story when we first saw X. We yeah. turned up to a, this theatre. We didn't know anything, what, about, anything the about the movie. We didn't see a trailer or anything, and we walked in, and the, the movie was like the it was decorated. You walk through these streamers, and you had this like There's cobwebs there. There's ivory fog, on the and yeah, ground, it was it was all. And then we sat down, and we go, "What the hell is this movie?" <laughs> and you go into this prequel and it actually informs a lot of that second movie. Yeah. So if you haven't seen uh, X, you probably will need to see X to see Pearl. But, uh, you know, I think they're together. They're a good twosome. So if you're sitting at home one night and you want to, you know, scare yourself half to death, these two movies are probably the right thing to see, Pearl and X. Um, reasons to see this movie, Hen? Uh, Mia Goth is absolutely amazing in this movie. Yeah, yeah she's, she's she's fantastic. Phenomenal. Reasons not to this movie, Hen? Uh, it's, yeah, it's a horror movie. It is kind of slow to start with. Yeah. And it's a bit weird. Yeah. It's definitely not for everyone's taste. For it sure. It's a strange one. Mia Goth is like the scream queen and like every time you turn on some movie news or anything like that, you're hearing that Mia Goth is getting... Uh, and out in a new project. Um, she's going to be in the new uh, Frankenstein film with Oscar Isaac, and you know, she's the it horror girl. So, uh, for those Scream fans, Scream Queen fans, um, Pearl is a good movie to, to stream. And you know, like it is a if you have seen the first one, definitely go see uh, Pearl the movie. So it's a great movie situation um, to go see. Loves going to see horror movies and movies with. <laughs> People getting the absolute bejeebus scared out of them. So, uh, Pearl is definitely a golf club. Uh, the championship belt holder for Hannah, is it still Creed 3? A thousand percent. Love that movie. I, I was going to waver and go off, but I rewatched uh, the original Scream last night, and I that movie just sold it home to me that Scream 6 was such a great movie. And uh, you haven't seen it yet, definitely do. Over to Hannah and Movie News. Welcome back to Movie News. So next week on the show, Pete and I are reviewing Dungeons and & Dragons. And the trailers for this movie have been sort of divisive. Everyone thinks they kind of look dumb and bad. And yes, but I think it looks kind of funny and might be a surprise hit on our hands, actually. It's a really good cast and it arrives in theatres much later. This week in cinema, we have John Wick 4 finally arriving. I don't know if you know this, but I'm um, a fan of the franchise. I love it. It's about a guy who seeks revenge for his puppy and his car. Very excited. This looks great. It's set in Paris. What more could you ask for? This one's for Nick. So streaming later this year on Apple TV+, Plus, a film starring Chris Evans and Amadeus. It is called Ghosted. The film kind of has Amadeus as a spy, secret agent, called the tax man, 
and uh, Chris Evans as a lovable dopey boyfriend who just kind of accidentally gets involved. And <laughs> it's a role reversal, it's funny, it's that action, spy, romance, comedy that, you know, we haven't had as of late and I don't know, it looks cute. <laughs> That's all the movies we have for this week. If there's anything you wanted to, us to take a look at, just leave a comment down below and uh, have a great rest. Thanks, Hannah. Great another movie news there. Excited for those upcoming movies. This week, Clickbait is presented by me. We're going to talk about, Hannah, how we make the Oscars watchable again. Oh. I promise it's the last time we're going to talk about the Oscars until next year. I promise. Let's make it watchable again, okay? So 18 million people watched it in America. That's down from the really big heights. I think these things will make it watchable again, okay? So let's have one host. They come out and they talk about the best pictures, 10 films. And then at the end of that, that chat, they drop two off. They announce all 10 and then they drop two off. And then we oh. cull every half hour two movies. And then we allow them to the... The last movie. The final two. Yeah, we get rid of the presenters. They were absolutely terrible this year. Not even funny, no jokes. Let's just have a really cool voiceover guy, explain each movie, explain who's nominated, and then announce a winner. The award rises up from the stage, you collect your award, you say your thing, you go off to the stage. All right? Then we change the order of the, the awards, all right? We push all the good awards to the back. We bring some new awards in. One is Best Newcomer. So whoever does their debut performance, Best Newcomer, Oscar for that, for the Best Newcomer. We do Best Stunt. Like stunt, stunt men and women need to get saluted for their work. So Best Stunt. And then you need Lifetime Achievement Awards. One for um, female, one for male, okay? This will stop giving countless awards to people for anything they're nominated for. Like, exactly. yeah, like uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, um, great, amazing career. Uh, but she get, wins for a movie that, you know, she wasn't even the best person in that movie. She wasn't even the best supporting actress in that movie. It's definitely she was awesome. <laughs> yeah. So let's stop that. Let's give them the career there. They get up, they get the statue, they do the speech. So much better. Halfway, halfway through, before halfway, we do a Super Bowl type mashup of all the best original songs, right. and then we name the winner. So yeah. instead of doing every performance, let's do a mashup of all the songs. Let's get Lady Gaga singing with Taylor Swift, or all like all that stuff, all yeah. mash up. That's so much better. Yeah. Then we have a halftime show, and the halftime show we're, we're recapping the winners. We're interviewing people, was talking about, oh, can you believe those two people got those two best picture. Um, got taken off. No, those two. We're down to our last four. We go into the last hour. We've got two best pitches to go, and we've got the major awards. So we announce best supporting actor categories. Then we announce the best director. Then we announce the best actress, best actor, and then we finish with the last two. And then we finish with a post game show. We talk about the award winners. We give the voting res results. You know how close your favourite movie was winning or not moving. You talk to the Best Picture winners. So much better, that show. What do you think, Ken? Actually, yeah, that sounds more entertaining. It's almost like watching the Super Bowl. It's like a really fun version of it. Yeah, and like the ads. So going off to an ad break, you could have uh, the re results, the votes, and then you come back and you get like a, a sneak peek of... A upcoming movie, you know, you know, promoting cinema. Yeah, like, like give me shit. like give me the view of Flowers of the Moon starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Martin Scorsese, Apple movie. Give me that. Give me give me a minute of that movie. Like that's gonna be uh, best picture nomination in next year. Give me some of that. You know, give me that. That'd be just lovely. But mm. let us know what you think. Drop a comment below and see if we can say the Oscars. Or do you actually really care? Do, um, you know, do we should we talk about the Oscars next year or should we just We've dedicated our last couple shows to it. Do we even bother it? So let us know what you think in the comments below. So what's next for us? We're going to review John Wick 4. Then we're going to review the Australian film Of An Age. We'll have a um, sneak preview review of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, yeah. And finally review 
speed racer. <gasps> yes! Yuck. We had a deal! Yuck. Yeah, we had a deal. I lost. Uh, and anything else to add? Nah, I just... Uh... Yeah, you're looking for that Speed Race review now, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to watch Speed Race next week, guys. Thanks. Like, follow, subscribe to our channels. I'm Pete. That's Henna. Go see some movies. Until next week, when we figure out what to watch next.